Welcome to Norway. You are in the drop zone and I am Jealous Fist. Yes, I am. Today we're talking tactics, which allow you to outthink, outplay, and outperform your opposition. Today is the second installment in my three-part series about consumables and their uses, general tips and thoughts, quick overviews on the consumables. Today I'll be covering nine of them. They will be the uh, mid-level consumables, probably a better term for that, but that's kind of how I think of them. Nine consumables today, a mix of green and blue and purple rarity items. I'm going to start off with the uh, least useful ones and then work my way into the ones that I think are good and helpful and you should use too. Starting off with the bad, number one, booby traps. There has been changes to them recently that do make them a little more useful. Um, I'm told I have not confirmed any of this because they're so expensive and uh, hit or miss, which I'll get onto in a second. But I've been told that now if you add in multiple booby traps up to three, it will actually increase the speed of the countdown timer. So if you put in three booby traps, the timer will speed up to so fast they barely have time to input the code before it blows up. And I'm told, though again, I can't confirm that this will be an instant kill. Before you get excited about that and think that's great, well, even if that takes only two booby traps or even three, that's a lot of materials. Uh, three of those is what the cost of two portables, two armor plates, something like that. And you can't guarantee somebody is even going to try and attempt to access the container that you have put the booby trap into. So it's a lot of buck for not much bang. They're useless, leave them in your shelter. If they're a white rarity, it might be useful, but it's not, so leave them alone. Number two, contact bombs. Contact bombs should be awesome. You'd think they would be great, but the uh, the trigger area, the tripwire that sets them off is way too small. They're purple rarity, which makes them 3,100 plus materials, something like that. I can't remember. I'm not going to get into specifics with numbers and stuff. These are just general thoughts. Sorry about that little aside. Let me get back to where I was. Um, the tripwire is too small, and it takes too many bombs to kill somebody. Now, before it took three well actually when they first came out i think it only took two maybe one i can't remember and then they nerfed it up to three now they have buffed contact bombs again to where it only takes two of them but again the trip area is so small they have to get right on them and also it's just the noise they make is loud enough to alert somebody unless you're just really not paying attention or there's a lot of explosions or you're in a party chat and people are talking plus gunfire you will hear it and you'll have enough time to react they're just too expensive these need to be moved down in rarity or made much more lethal with a much wider trigger area to actually be useful. Leave them at home, leave them in your shelter, let them stack up for deconstruction to fund your war effort. Other than that, they are useless. Number three, decoys. I used to love these. Uh, they're green rarity. Um, they used to make a lot of noise, even though they were very predictable and obvious in terms of the shot patterns and the noises they made. If you've been playing the game longer than in a week, you knew instantly that you were hearing a decoy. The great thing about them was that if you were in a hot fight with somebody at close quarters and you needed to run away or reposition, say you're both squaring off on uh, opposite corners of a building, you could put one of those down, wait for it to make all its noise, and it would cover your the sound of your foot steps enough to let you get away, reposition, whatever you wanted to do. Lately, either this season or the season before, again, there's so many back and forth, I can't keep track anymore, so pardon me on that. Uh, not too long ago, they changed it, the shot pattern of these things, to where they just, it's a shot, a shot. Excuse me, but I'll just kind of mimic it now. This will be annoying, but it's bang, bang, bang. One, for starters, the shots are so far apart that they won't cover your footsteps anymore. Two, the shots are so far apart that it sounds totally fake. And three, every single time in the past couple of months that somebody has used a decoy, it was the opposite of a decoy. It wasn't a decoy. It was, hey, I'm right here. Come and shoot me. Because I've heard these things go off a ton in the last few months. And every single person that has used one of those around me, I just went and killed them. Like, it's just getting you killed. Don't use them. They're no good. Um, they need to be lowered in rarity to be useful. Uh, maybe even then, probably not useful and they at least need to make more noise at a sustained um, clip or something uh, again sorry not so good with the words right now or the shots the gunfire the decoy sounds it's making need to be much more realistic to actually be useful because they just are not useful they are useless right now next consumable jammers jammers are not too bad 
but with the changes to transmitters and pings, um, jammers are nearly useless now. Unless you've already got one in your bag, you picked it up in the game that you're running around in, don't even bring them in. They're good right now for making some noise, for robbing a guy that you're fighting of his compass and his map, and shielding you from pings, but it will also shield someone else from your ping if they're within the field with you. You won't even ping them, you'll ping somebody else. I have stopped using jammers. There was a time when I used them a lot. Because of all the changes to the game, they are no good right now. Don't bring them. Moving on to the good mid-tier consumables. First one we're going to start off with is alarm traps. You probably could have guessed that these would be coming up. I love these things. I have multiple videos about using them. If you're somebody that cannot afford portable signals detectors, uh, also known as pings, if you can't afford pings, bring some alarm traps. Expedite learning where they spawn, where you can get them in game. Start building up a nice little stash of them once you have like 500 or... Ugh. Once you have 500 or so of them, start bringing in a couple. But only if, I would say, only if you're somebody who is going to be more of an active player. You're going for the airdrop, you're going for kills, something like that. If you're a stealthy looter, a guy who goes in, gets some stuff, gets out, don't bring it. If you're like my daughter and, and like to loot and toot, leave it at home. You don't need it. But if you're active or you're going to be going after something and you need somebody or something to watch your back, bring an alarm trap. Alarm traps are great. Moving on. Second good consumable are transmitters. Transmitters are great right now. They have made it so that if you drop down a transmitter, you will no longer ping it when you use your ping. It will no longer show up on your map as a red dot when you use your portable signals detector or if you hit the big signals detector. These are fantastic now. In fact, they're so good um, that I'm bringing at least two of them, and uh, it's hard to show it in. Um, it's hard to show in footage how useful they are because when you're using them correctly. You actually get less action. You're dealing with a lot less tryhards and sweats because they are burning through their pings trying to get you, but they're pinging the transmitters. Nowadays, with the way the game is now, as soon as I get pinged, I go to the closest spot, the campiest spot, and I put a transmitter down in a bush behind a rock or in the bathroom of a building nearby. Something where they cannot see as they get closer that there's a transmitter, and they're either going to have to hunt around and waste time, or they're going to have to use a ping, waste the ping, and waste their time and by the time they figured out that your transmitter is a fake one they've burned through all their pings or they've wasted a couple of minutes or they've just left that area completely because they're scared and they don't want to dig you out so you cannot lose using these things also you will no longer pick up your teammates if you're in teams playing duos trios whatever you will no longer pick up your friendly transmitters you will see those as blue on your map as well these are fantastic and actually honestly people complain about portables uh, they complain about pings I think with the changes to the uh, signals detector and the transmitters that pings have been unbalanced and nerfed down way too much. There are way too many counters to those now that transmitters are awesome. Moving on to the final two, I'm going to combine these two together because I think to really enjoy these two consumables, they need to be paired. Don't bring one without the other. Though if you were going to bring one without the other, you would bring antibiotics only before you would only bring painkillers. So if you have to choose between the two, if you can only afford to bring one antibiotic don't bring the painkiller if you had to make a choice what i personally recommend is if you're going to use antibiotics or painkillers that you should always bring at least one of each take a painkiller you are instantly back to full health and it will then start to slowly drain away right the painkillers effects covering up your damage fade away. As soon as you take that painkiller, you immediately pop another antibiotics because the antibiotics are adding one health point per however many seconds, right? So the way it works in combat, you're squaring off with a guy, you're fighting, you've been shot, you get behind a rock, pop your painkiller immediately. Take your painkillers and then as soon as you're done hitting that right trigger, filling up the consumable use wheel, right? Like you have to take it. Once it's taken, immediately put a antibiotic in your hand and take the antibiotics. As your painkillers wear off, covering up, sealing up the damage you've taken, right? As those wear down, your antibiotics will be building up your health. They used to go down and up, and uh, painkillers used to go down, and antibiotics used to go up with your health at about the same speed. They've either made 
painkillers drain away faster or they've slowed down the rate of recovery from antibiotics. I'm not exactly sure. I haven't tested it yet. Don't really want to. I don't care. But now you have to take your painkillers and then immediately, immediately take your pain, uh, sorry, your antibiotics. It's kind of confusing mentally to keep this all in my head and say it out correctly. I think out of all the consumables that you can bring into a game, even maybe even above portables, maybe even above pings, painkillers and antibiotics are probably the most useful and life-saving consumables you can bring in bigger. I have won thousands of gunfights. I've taken thousands of lives that I would not have been able to take if I wouldn't have had painkillers and antibiotics. They are stronger than armor plates. They work better and faster than bandages or disinfectant. They are just fantastic. If you're trying to win gunfights and live, if you're not bringing in painkillers paired with antibiotics. You're wrong. You're screwing up. You need to get your life in order because you're living it wrong. We have standards and morals on this channel. Part of our standards and morals are to be a good standard moral man. You need to use painkillers and antibiotics. Those of you, I'm sorry, I say this all the time. Those of you that like to cry on the internet and whine and moan to the devs, nerf armor plates, take them away, blah, blah, blah. Well, guess what? You have painkillers and antibiotics. You can do the same and better or cheaper than armor plates with painkillers and antibiotics. Next week, we are going to be covering the good, fancy consumables, the ones that are expensive, the ones that are flashy, the ones that really get kills, the ones that let you know where your enemies are, the ones that let you reach out and touch your enemies from afar. That's right. Next week, we're going to be talking portables, mortars, armor plates, all of that fun stuff, all of those fun things that will let you truly destroy your enemies and steal their girlfriends. As always, I am your number one retrieved airdrops, 10,000 and counting, all time, all system, and your favorite favorite official vigor partner's favorite official vigor partner go and ask him jealous fist bye